So after a day of a fair amount of confusion, a heavy dose of speculation, it remains best to go straight to the source. We got to see from the president directly last night. And our next guest has known the man for decades and spoke to the president yesterday. Let's bring in Rudy Giuliani, President Trump's attorney and former New York City mayor and the host of Rudy Giuliani's Common Sense podcast. Good morning, Rudy. Thanks for being here. We know you spoke to the president yesterday well, on you. the phone. Um, how was he feeling? How did he sound? Well, I mean, on the phone, he sounded like himself completely. I mean, we had about a 35, 40 minute conversation. Some of it, of course, about his health. I was very concerned about him. I was very happy to hear his voice sounding exactly the same as I've known it for 30 years. And then uh, after we talked about his health, we started to talk about politics. <laughs> and he gave me a lot of notes to give to the campaign about what they should do and how they should do it. And even wrote out a kind of speech. Uh, I had to kind of get him off the phone, so we you know, went back and rested. And he, he did say uh, that he'd love to get out as quickly as possible. He feels like he'd go, he'd go out now. He said he felt pretty bad the first day, but now he feels for the last 24 hours, and that was 3 o'clock yesterday, he felt perfectly fine, no fever, a little tired, but not very tired. For him to be a little tired is nothing. So I, I uh, foresee, I've been, had, had several friends that have been through this, some much worse, and they've, they've gotten through and they're fine now. And he's, he's probably the strongest and healthiest guy I know anywhere near his age. Well, that's very good news to hear, Rudy. And another question on everyone's mind is, how are you feeling? Uh, we know that you were in that debate <laughs> prep room. Uh, Chris Christie was in that room as well. We know that he has now tested positive and checked himself into a hospital as a cautious measure. But are you OK? And have you been tested? Yeah, I have been tested. I was tested two days ago. I'll get tested again probably tomorrow. Uh, I have no symptoms. Uh, Chris was on my right and Kellyanne was on my left. Oh, gosh, for about four hours and two different days. And the president, of course, was in front of me when we were doing it. And then I was on the airplane with him. And then I saw him again on Wednesday afternoon. Last time I saw him was Wednesday, about 2.15, before he was taking off for the, uh, for the, for the rally. And I have to tell you, like Joe said before, you could have knocked me down when I heard that he that he had COVID on Friday morning. He looked he looked perfect. I mean, he looked really good. So these things are strange. And how can how can you explain it? Chris here, Kellyanne there, they both have it. And I uh, right now I don't. So you just don't know. And I think uh, the thing the president I think wants people to know is we've got to face up to this illness. We can't. I mean, he he, he could have chosen to go hide somewhere in the White House for five months, uh, particularly you know. Uh, since it's pretty nice there and you can communicate from there. But he said, I couldn't do that. I, uh, I, had to, I had to cautiously start to go out and lead the way back. If I didn't lead, who was going to lead? If I stayed holed up there, the whole economy would stay holed up. Uh, and I, my, God, I really relate to that because that's what I felt on September 11. I felt like I had to get out in front. I had to lead. The city was going to take a little while to come back. And maybe I was taking a little risk in getting them to come out so fast and work down there. But life's got to go on. We, <laughs> we have to live with risk. We have to teach our children that. There's, I mean, I, I didn't get COVID, but God forbid something else could happen to me in 20 minutes. You don't stop living. And COVID now is treatable. And COVID now is at a, at a, at a mortality, fatality, whichever rate, which is uh, within, within the norm for, for a serious illness. So it's no longer what it was four or five months ago, and if we act like four or five months ago, where we're all hiding behind chairs and have big masks on all the time, uh, gosh, we're, our economy will never get going. So wear a mask, cl cleanse your hands, be careful, but don't be paralyzed. Please, please, our economy has to come back. And for the good of our children, we get this economy back. And we assert ourselves as the most powerful nation on earth, because otherwise, you know who will? The country that attacked us, China. Mm -hmm. And they attacked us. With Bingo, this. Mr. Mayor. Believe me, yeah. I hold them responsible. I hold them responsible for what happened to my president yesterday. Well, it was the day before yesterday and everybody else. No, it's a very important point, uh, Mr. Mayor. Great point. And, and you're you saying that you had to kick the president off the phone after 40 minutes sounds about right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, good information. <laughs> but you, you, you mentioned uh, leading after uh, after 9-11, uh, unprecedented times. Uh, and the president is channeling that. What's your what's your advice to him, having spoken to him about the next couple of days going forward? What action should he be taking at this moment, do you think? 
Well, I, I, it's a little like a baseball player. I love baseball, and you know, baseball players get injuries, and sometimes they come back too fast, right, Pete? And they get even football players, yeah. and then they get really injured. Uh, this is this isn't going to be long. We're talking three to seven days for a recovery, but he should listen to the doctor. <laughs> Uh, and this is this is a chance for us, all of us who he's carried for three and a half, four years. I mean, we watch this man, and those of us who, who love him and care about him, it makes me want to cry to think of what they've done to him. Every single day he's been in the White House, they, they try to get him out. From the day he started until now. I mean, uh, last so week true. Nancy Pelosi wanted to impeach him because he nominated uh, uh, Judge uh, Barrett. I mean, impeach him over Judge Barrett? I mean, uh, some of the others are just as stupid. They have tortured this man. And he's accomplished more than any president that I can remember. So maybe he's entitled to a little rest. And I said to him, you got a lot of friends. They're all calling me. They all want to go out and help you. You know, we can't campaign as well as you can, but we can campaign. And I think there's something that's been sparked in the American people. I think it's like a friend that you take, for, uh, take, take advantage of, or you take, not take advantage of, but take, take for granted. Uh, he's the friend we've been taking for granted. He's been carrying us. Now it's time for all of us to carry him, and you're going to see this campaign fan out all over the country. Amen. And it's probably going to have a lot more people than it had before. We've got more volunteers in the last two days than I don't know when. Mm -hmm. Maybe the first day he announced. Rudy, as was mentioned at the beginning of this segment, you were involved in debate prep for the president. You've been around him through that deb debate prep. Uh, the next one on the schedule, though, is the vice presidential debate. Uh, Kamala Harris is already out there uh, in Utah ahead of her debate. I want you to listen to something she had to say and then see if we can get some advice from you on how Mike Pence might prepare for this debate. Listen to this. Sure. Let's put our shoulders to the wheel. Let's do the work that is necessary to continue to fight for our ideals and our values. And in this case, what they fought for so many years ago, which is for freedom and and to hold our country accountable for the ideals we say we hold dear. So it's great to be here. I'm, I'm really honored to be here. I'll be here for the next few days preparing for the debate. And I want to thank the people of Utah for being so welcoming in such a warm way. Rudy, this debate between Vice President Pence and Kamala Harris has got to be very different from the one that took place a week ago. What would you see going forward? What advice would you give? Well, I think it's, you know, the, the vice president is a terrific debater. He's a very, very strong speaker. He's really smart. I think he's going to, obviously, he's going to point out what the, administ what the administration has accomplished. And also, I think most importantly, we are having a recovery. We're having a recovery that's better than anybody expected. I mean, the guy, the guy who gave us the best economy possible is giving us a, a recovery that's five times faster than all the experts predicted. It would be tragic to try to interrupt that with somebody like, Kamala Harris, who wants to have, uh, I mean, she's not going to have any, any, any pr problem with that whole green thing there. She'll have no problem at all. I mean, she's big, big in favor of it. She wants to raise taxes to about 60, 70 percent. She endorses the entire socialist uh, 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 pro program. She's one of the authors of it. So, I mean, he's got, he's got to point out who she is. She's a, she's a very, very massive spending socialist. And then her record as district attorney, gee, I'd love to take that apart because I was a U.S. attorney. She's one of those that I consider one of the most disgraceful U.S. attorneys. She put little people in jail and she let big people go. 1,500 hmm. marijuana smokers and then, a bunch of, and then a bunch of big gangsters and gang members went free because she, she couldn't convict anybody. So she went after the little people to get statistics. I can pick that out in a second. A certain number of prosecutors like that. They're usually too ambitious and not very ethical. So I think he's got to go after her and point out who she is. This is a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. This is a true socialist. And uh, given the fact that Joe Biden doesn't seem to be, as kind as I can say it, that sharp uh, and gets pushed a little, I mean, his positions change all the time. We don't know where his position is on the Green New Deal. I mean, he was for it, against it, and now he's slightly for it. She endorsed it. <laughs> endorsed it. And a four trillion dollar tax increase, four trillion dollar tax, and another three trillion dollars for that. That's a socialist, Pete. That's a that's a true, Rudy, absolute Rudy. socialist. And that, Rudy, I'm just curious. Right. I'm just curious if you've. I, I don't want to interrupt, but we, we're, I don't want to run out of time. Have you spoken to Pence at all about debate strategy as he heads into this? You, you know, COVID-19 is now going to be a front and center issue at this debate, perhaps more than ever. I'm just curious if you've had any conversations with him about strategy, how to approach that just, issue, or anything in, in general. Uh, a different team is preparing him. I have talked to him here and there, but not like in a formal sense. You know, given the way he performed last time and knowing him as well as I do, there's no reason for it. The people who are, who are doing it are, are doing it. And both he and the president 
they, they don't prepare like in a rehearsed way. They prepare for questions and answers. You know, what? here's mm -hmm. the answer. Did I get all the facts in? Here are a few more facts. Well, maybe it's better to say it this way. It's a much more satisfying way to prepare than sort of kind of acting yeah. out, acting out the debate. And I think it works Mr. very Mayor, well we for the president uh, each oh. time. Unfortunately, we have to leave it right there. I could listen, talk to you all morning long. You, you, is the guy who took on the mob. Everybody you know about taking on the big guys. And him. Amen. Absolutely. Oh, uh, yeah, we will. yeah, these guys are nothing compared to the mob. Nothing. There's, there's zero <laughs> compared to the mob. Mayor <laughs> these Giuliani, guys are easy, one of a kind. Dangerous. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it.